everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Taylor and I run the blog the last in linen today I am going to be sharing with you a kind of late somewhat ambitious spring TBR I know this video was going up a little late in the game but I only just started my channel back again so I really didn't have any other choice um but I did want to show you guys what books I am hoping to read in the spring. As of right now, spring only really has about like two months, give or take, left. So I am hoping to get to these books, but the TBR that I'm going to show you has 13 books on it. So it is quite ambitious and they're not even all the books I necessarily am hoping to get to. These are just the ones that I'm really excited about right now. That being said, there's also no guarantee that I'll get to all of these or even half of these, but I am hoping to get to some of them. So I thought I'd share with you what I would like to read. I'm gonna zoom through the first three books because I talked about them more extensively in my last video that I will link down below. It is my recent book haul. The first book I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. Like I said, talked about this in my last video, so I don't wanna go into it too much, but it's a book that takes place across three time periods and focuses on three different women, I believe from male perspectives and their lives intertwine somehow. It sounds amazing, the reviews have been great. I can't wait to read this one. And then the next one is a memoir, and that is Motherwell, A Girlhood. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say, uh, by Deborah Orr. I'm so excited for this. I love a good memoir. This is about a girl who grew up in Motherwell in Scotland, and it's about her relationship with her mother. I am really looking forward to seeing the relationship be between her mother, herself, and the landscape. My husband grew up close to Motherwell, um, so I am familiar with the area and I don't know all that much about it. So I'm looking forward to getting a different perspective on what it was like to grow up there. And then lastly, the one that I'm gonna zoom through is Isabella Allende's A Long Petal of the Sea. This is a historical fiction about a young doctor and his sister-in-law that get exiled from Barcelona during the Spanish Civil War to Chile. And when they do, they, bar they board a chartered boat by Pablo Neruda, the poet. He is on the boat, so it's about them and it's about him and a whole load of other characters that are on the boat, how their lives are affected by this war and how they intertwine with each other. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm in such a historical fiction mood, so I think this one's gonna be a really successful read for me. I'm hoping, no guarantees, but we'll see what happens. And then speaking of historical fiction, I've got what I like to call the less serious, less concerned with facts historical fiction, and that is Philippa Gregory's The Lady of the Rivers. I used to read Philippa Gregory like she was going out of style when I was younger, when I was like 10, 12, 13, 14. I've always really loved historical novels. Her writing is not at all factual. I know that she can be quite a complex author for a lot of people. They feel really com complicated when it comes to her novels. She's definitely not concerned with accuracy, but I do find her novels really fun to read, really easy to read, and I just need something that I kind of know I'm going to enjoy. So I've decided to start her books from the beginning. This is the first book in the larger series that she has, uh, the Plantagenet and Tudor, Planta Plantagenet, I don't, I can't speak today, the Plantagenet and Tudor novels, Plantagenet and Tudor novels, you know what I mean. Anyway, there's a bunch of them, this is the first one, I want to read it. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> And then another book I'm really looking forward to is Coventry by Rachel Cusk. You can see that I got this from Toppings and Company, it's my favorite bookstore in the world. Um, this is a signed first edition, which is lovely. I am a massive Rachel Cusk fan. I first read her Outline Trilogy, which are three books loosely connected to each other, and generally just about one 
character and their environment and their thoughts. They're not <laughs> the most thrilling books, as I'm sure you can tell, but they're written incredibly and I'm really big on character-driven books. So I really enjoyed them. This, however, is a little bit different. This is a book of essays. So it's not fiction, um, but it's a series of essays about womanhood and art and Coventry. I think, I haven't obviously read this yet, so I'm not completely sure, but I believe that Rachel Cusk either grew up in Coventry or lived for some time in Coventry. So I believe that she kind of sits on the idea of Coventry and that snowballs into her life and choices and womanhood and art and writing. Um, and yeah, I like I said, I don't know much about it um, and I haven't read it, but I am looking forward to it. Rachel Cusk is an amazing writer in my humble opinion um, and she comments a lot on class and landscape and womanhood and those are all big ticks for me so I am looking forward to reading that one and then the next book I want to read is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier this is actually a book club pick for one of my book clubs I believe in May and um, so I will be probably reading this no matter what this is about a woman who I believe loses both her brother and her fiance in the first world war and during her time of grieving starts to make kneeling pads for a church and um, so I don't know if you've ever been inside a church generally it's only old churches that still have kneeling pads but they were individually sewn and embroidered pads for kneeling during a service um, and so it's about her and the group of women that make these kneeling pads I, in the past year, have gotten really into sewing and needlework, so I am fascinated by this idea. I also um, have been going to church since I was very small, um, very familiar with the kneeling pads and how personal they can get and how personal they can be and how beautiful they can be. So this is a story that really intrigues me. The next book is a little bit smaller, and I think a short story collection? Mm, no, absolutely not. It's a novel, but it's a short novel. And that is Voices in the Evening by Natalia Ginsberg. I've not actually read any Natalia Ginsberg before, but people I really trust and some of my very good friends love her writing. And I'm always in for a short book. You can't turn down a short book. Natalia Ginsberg is an Italian author and I've only recently gotten into Italian writing. Um, like a lot of people, I started reading the Neapolitan no novels and I'm looking forward to getting kind of deeper into that kind of writing. I also just want to note that this one is translated by D.M. Lowe. So that's good. It's a translated book. Can't go wrong with translation. My next book is a biography that I am dying to get to because it's of one of my favorite authors. And that is Manderley Forever, The Life of Daphne du Maurier by Tatiana de Rosne. This is a very popular, if not the biography of uh, Daphne du Maurier. Daphne du Maurier wrote Rebecca, which is one of my favorite books. It's a very, very popular classic that's kind of a gothic book and a mystery and it's um, a little bit of a thriller, actually. It's, um, it's a really, really great book, and I'm a big fan of Du Maurier's work. So I'm looking forward to finding out more about her life. I know that she had quite an interesting life, um, but I don't know the details of it. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to all of these. How many times can I say that? My next book is a little bit of Canadian literature, um, which is great, I don't read that much Canadian literature and I would really like to read more. So I picked up Women Talking by Miriam Taves. This is a fictional take on a real event where a group of women in a small Mennonite community in Canada were uh, raped. Um, yeah, it says over 100 girls and women were raped by what many thought were ghosts or demons. 
Um, like I said, this is based on real events. Miriam Taves did actually grow up in a small Mennonite community in Canada, and a lot of her books do take place in a Mennonite environment in the Canadian landscape. I'm looking forward to this as much as you can, but obviously it's very, very heavy. Um, it's another kind of short book, so hopefully that's okay. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it, but of course I'm apprehensive because I know it's going to be very hard to read. It's not exactly the most shining light in a piece of Canadian history, um, but it's very real. And so it's something that I think probably needs to be talked about. So I am looking forward to this. Um, I've never read any Miriam Taves and I know that a lot of people really like her and she's apparently a very beautiful writer. So I am looking forward to experiencing that um, and seeing what I can learn from the book. I think that's really what's important. I've also got here A Girl Returned by Donatella di Pientrantonio. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, this was recommended to me by a friend. I saw it on Instagram and uh, asked if she thought I would enjoy it and she said yes. I'm going into this one quite blind. This is another short one, so that's good. All I know about this is it's about a very young girl, I believe she's about 13, who just like shows up. No, she's taken from her family that she thought was her own and is given to strangers and must live with them. Um, that's the first sentence in the blurb. I'm not going to read any anything else because it's quite a big blurb and I, I do want to go in blind. But this is another example of Italian fiction. Like I said, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Um, in fact, if you are looking for Italian fiction and you're not really sure where to go, I would suggest Europa editions. They are also the ones that print the um, Neapolitan novels and they do a lot of Italian translations. This particular book is translated by Anne Goldstein. So that's always good. It's good to read translated fiction. It's very important. And I think this sounds really great. So um, it's gonna be good, I think. We're getting there. We've gone through 10 books. I've got three more. The next one will be no surprise to anybody, um, but it's a big one and that is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. I recently just bought these beautiful covers because I love them so, so much. I won't get into this too much. Everybody knows what Wolf Hall is about. It's about the life of Thomas Cromwell, who was in the court at the time of Henry VIII. Thomas Cromwell in real life, as in the novel, was quite a low-born person who rose to the courts and gained the trust of the king and um, ended up being very important in that environment. So the Wolf Hall trilogy is about his life. I don't know much about Thomas Cromwell's life. I do plan on doing a little bit of research before I go into the book because I've heard that you can get a bit lost if you don't know the factual history behind it. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I mentioned earlier how much I want historical fiction and so obviously this fits the bill. It's, it's a big novel but I can get stuck into a nice big novel. I've got some more Canadian literature, which is always exciting, and, and I'm going to be picking up, I'm definitely going to be picking up Margaret Atwood's Alias Grace this spring. I watched the Netflix show two years ago, whenever it came out, I think it was about two years ago, and just adored it, thought it was so good. So I really wanna read the original text. I'm kind of hit or miss with Margaret Atwood, I'll be honest, some of her books I love and some of them I just can't really get on with. Um, but I think I'm gonna love this. The consensus on it is that most people seem to love it. So I think I'll, I'll probably really like it too. Another historical fiction, but based on true events. Alias Grace is based off of a story of a woman in Canada who is accused of killing her master and his wife, I believe. Basically the people she works for, she was a maid in their house. Um, she was part of the help and she was accused of killing them. This did actually happen in Canadian history, obviously not exactly like it happened in this book because this is fiction, but it did happen. Um, and that's what the book is about. So 
I mean, I'm just reading all the historical fiction <laughs> this spring, clearly. My last book is a bit of a weird choice, but I think you'll understand why. I would like to read Winter by Ali Smith. I have been collecting these um, seasonal books by Ali Smith. I believe the last one is due to come out this year. Um, I've read Autumn. Winter is obviously the next one. I own Spring. And I know that you don't have to read them in order, but I want to, and I didn't read Winter in Winter. So I'm hoping to read Winter so that I can read Spring. So that's also kind of on my Spring TBR. I don't know what this in particular is about, but this seasonal quartet is dealing with the political climate. <laughs> it talks a lot about, well, at least Autumn, talked a lot about Brexit and the effect Brexit had on interpersonal relationships, on the individuals, the anxieties that came along with it, um, and also linked it to our landscape because that's what Brexit is. It is a land full of people who have connections and, and homes and relationships. I loved Autumn. Um, I haven't heard much on the other ones. I don't really want to, to be honest, because I, I would like to make my own decisions, but I've heard that they're... The only thing I have heard is that they're all really good. I've not heard bad things about any of them. So I am hoping to like this one, but this is a means to an end because I'd really like to read Spring this spring. And that, folks, is all of them. Those are all the books on my Spring TBR. Like I said, it's quite ambitious. Um, but hopefully we can get to them. It's not like I'm lacking in time um, right now. So yeah, let's hope. I'd love to know what you guys are hoping to read this spring um, or what you're reading right now. If you've read any of the books I've mentioned, if you want to check out any of the books I mentioned or check out where you can follow me, um, everything is always lit linked down in the description box. I will also link my last video that I put up where I featured some of the books I mentioned at the beginning of this video. If you want to support my channel, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I am new to this space on the internet, so uh, I'd love to have some people to talk to. And yeah, that's it. And until my next video, I guess, happy reading.